Thank you very much. All right, so you've heard a lot of great advice uh, thus far this evening. I think it's been nice in the order so far. We first started off with thinking about in high school how to prepare and select the right program um, for you, and then looking at transitioning from that high school to college, um, and what are the key components to take into account at that time in looking for a college or post-secondary opportunity. And I will really focus on now once you're in college, um, how to gain those life skills and adapt to this new environment and new routine that you're in in college. Um, I'm also really passionate about transitions. Um, I actually, I was just talking with some of my co-panelists. I actually live across the way here on campus with freshmen. I'm a faculty member and I'm a resident faculty member here on campus. And I learned that I live in Jessica's old residence hall <laughs> in Party Tower just across the way, um, which is where I lived when I was a freshman here at USC as well. So I've been here, I did all my school here and now I'm on the clinical faculty in occupational therapy. And the reason that I chose to live with students is because I am really passionate about that transition experience. And, and I will say kind of at the beginning that thinking about, um, here we're talking mostly about um, ASD, LDs, ADHD, but with all undergraduate students, all students transitioning from high school to the next opportunity, there is a steep learning curve and everyone can have difficulties. Um, in my clinical practice here at USC, we have an occupational therapy faculty practice. And in my clinical practice, I see a lot of students, um, not only with ASD, but a variety of uh, difficulties. Could be managing stress, difficulties managing time, um, and a variety of things. Um, that we work with, which I'll explain more about. And we also work with adults uh, with chronic diseases or managing lifestyle factors uh, with any adults and young adults. But our primary population is with students. And so in my clinical work, I've, I've seen a lot of difficulties that students have just in day-to-day -day life. And so I thought it'd be a really great opportunity to live amongst students and really be there day-to-day -day and get to engage with students. Outside. I also teach outside of the classroom and outside of the clinical world in real life situations, which is really what occupational therapy is all about in your daily activities in the natural environment. So I really try to take advantage of this community and this city here in Los Angeles to engage students and help them to participate in daily activities. Um, and tonight just really cemented the understanding that all of you have that it's, it can be really difficult to find services and supports, especially as people are transitioning out of high school where they may have had an IEP um, and it was determined um, with, with you as parents perhaps, with teachers, with professionals, um, that that was just what they were provided. And as you come to college, it's all about that self-determination and seeking out your own services, which can present a lot of challenges. And it's really difficult to even seek out services in some places. I even realized this with, um, I just met Dr. Harkey tonight and, and I'm here at USC, as is he, and, and we weren't aware of each other and he wasn't aware of our services. So even here, which is not that big of a place, I just walked over from work and then I'm walking home after, it's, it's easy to miss services and with some unique and specialized services that are offered. Um, we, at our faculty practice, try to do a lot of marketing to students, but they really have to seek us out and want to participate in our programs. Um, and I, I have really appreciated the, um, the speakers so far, and I, I thought of that law of diminishing returns that Dr. McMahon discussed, that students need to be more independent once they arrive at a, a university or college setting and, and to build strategies to be able to get there. Um, I think it's a time of a lot of change for everyone. There's a, think about all the challenges that are here at a university, just for anyone, and then that may be amplified with certain students um, dealing with autism spectrum disorders, learning disabilities, ADHD, um, roommates, which have been discussed, a new environment, um, perhaps living on your own for the first time for most of these students, um, leaving high school, uh, perhaps living far away from family and supports that they know, um, finding your way to classes, dealing with a very different schedule than you've had in high school, 
um, where your classes are more sporadic. You might only have class Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or have some days off, and how do you really manage your time? Um, so here at USC, I'll tell you a little bit about what I do and what, what services and give you some advice on my recommendations for uh, these students in college. Um, here at USC, we work closely with the Disability Services and Programs, uh, many of whom are here today. Thanks for joining us this evening. Um, one of my colleagues works uh, within Disability Services and Programs as an occupational therapist. And that's a great way that we link up with students, but students can find us from a variety of sources and, and be connected with our services, um, although they do need to seek them out. Um, we have been working with college students for many years, and it's only more recently when we've started building our program for students with on the autism spectrum here at USC and in the community. Um, and, and we work closely with DSP, um, and what our focuses are really on uh, promoting participation and engagement in university life. So a lot of times we do look at academics as one component, but we really look holistically at daily life and lifestyle factors to build a good foundation and promoting self-efficacy, that belief and self-determination, that belief in oneself that they can make change and they can be able to succeed in the things that they do. So finding that support system, and there's a lot of us that are engaged in these supportive efforts. I really try to focus on being a partner um, with the students that I work with. And the first session that we meet with might look like, I might ask them questions about their daily routines, their habits, um, their interests, what they enjoy doing, and what they want to do, and really co-create goals. And I would say for parents, that's one thing that I really recommend to all parents of any student that's transitioning out of high school is to really talk with them and understand what their goals are, where they'd like to be, what they might like to be doing in the future, and what type of environment interests them in, in a college or post-secondary opportunity um, so that they're really invested in, in these goals that they have set for themselves. I think as parents, it's really important to continue advocating for your students, um, but really allow for self-determination that they are a key player in, in the decision in, in what will be going on with them in the future. Um, so I, cre I try to create a supportive environment where we're looking at take, maybe taking some small risks with support um, to be able to engage. So some things that I do here on campus might be to engage in real world activities. I typically meet with people once a week for an hour and, and I, I try to use the campus and the environment to our advantage so we can engage in these opportunities. We may spend a session looking up, we have tons of on-campus clubs and in the community. We may look up and identify clubs that are interesting. Find out, okay, well, where's the meeting? When is the meeting? Who might be at the meeting? What is the action plan to get there? Um, is there someone you know that's interested in this? Figuring out how to engage in that. And we really do a lot of planning in sessions and then debriefing in the next session. So it's really about what do you want this week? What could we try out that's a small risk that's pushing you maybe a bit out of your comfort zone? What are the barriers and how can we break those down? How can we problem solve? Um, and then debriefing. Well, how did it go? Did you make it there to that club meeting? What, if not, what happened? What was challenging about it? What would help you to be able to do that again? Is that still something that's meaningful to you? Um, so I really focus on creating routine with flexibility. So creating some structure, but building in flexibility as well. Um, looking at a lot of um, the students maybe, especially coming from a more rigid uh, routine in high school, where you have school from 7.30 to 3.30, and then maybe a group activity afterwards might be much more regimented. And now in college, they have full control over their routines. When no one's telling them when to go to bed or asking them to wake up in the morning at a certain time. So to really create and build a routine that is meaningful and, and a healthy foundation for the student. So I look at a variety of things such as um, bookending the day. What's a morning routine? Um, what's a great morning routine for you? What helps you to wake up and get out of bed? Looking at sensory strategies that may help students um, be able to get out of bed. Is there a, 
scented lotion, or what type of music might you want to play, um, or a variety of things. Or is a shower in the morning a good idea, or a shower at night? Really looking at those specific details of daily life to build in a routine in the morning and before bed. So maybe an hour before you want to go to sleep, what will you do to wind down and to be calm and relax yourself so that you can get good sleep? When will you have meals? Are you eating three meals a day and snacks? Um, are you doing exercise? All of these daily foundational pieces can make a big difference um, in people dealing with uh, anxiety, um, with social situations or with academics, um, dealing with stress, dealing with difficulty managing time, creating a great foundation at the beginning uh, can make a really big difference um, to promote health and promote focus and energy. Starting off with a good baseline and then building off of that to take those small risks, perhaps of socializing or things like that. Um, trying to build self-confidence, identifying and discussing strengths um, and, and factors that promote success and really focusing in on that and building motivation. We use motivational interviewing to identify positive changes that students would like to make. And, and then help them in making those plans a reality. I mentioned earlier, trying to use the campus. Um, I'll share a couple examples. Um, so once I was working with a student who um, had Asperger's and was very nervous around police and authority figures and felt very uncomfortable. And here at USC, we have um, Department of Public Safety and we have a lot of officers around campus um, that some of them have guns and are trained by LAPD and the student was very afraid and fearful about the police that were on campus. So uh, one time I we went out walking out of our, we have a little clinic at the Student Health Center, we went out walking on campus and and I knew one of the officers and so I had arranged for him to be nearby and we went and talked with him and it was a supported conversation where we were able to break down some of the fears and really learn about what that officer did and what their role was, was to keep students safe. And so this student I was working with then had kind of this mantra of, oh, D um, Department of Public Safety, they are here to keep me safe, and felt just much more comfortable around it. Another student was working on building independent living skills. Um, he was living, he was an international student um, from China living here with his mother, um, studying music performance. And, and building some skills like managing finances, being able to talk to others. Um, so we went to the dining hall uh, for one of our sessions and practiced ordering food and selecting food and talking with people. And we had a small, I had some, sometimes I have students with me that we had a small group that we could practice conversation skills in a really natural environment. So providing opportunities to engage in that. And we really try to focus on the just right challenge for that student. Of what is that piece that's not going to create frustration, but what is the activity that's going to promote success and that feeling after that, wow, I just, I just did this. I just went out and went to this club meeting or whatever it might be. Um, and so that door to willingness uh, that Dr. McMahon mentioned that students need to be willing to engage in some of these opportunities and seek after their own services as well. Um, but giving, I think the key is to really give support and promote that right balance between um, the scaffolding of a little bit of support uh, that ju is just right, not too much support, so that the student can feel really successful and build on those opportunities. And that is a learning experience that all students are going through to uh, more or less degrees of difficulty and challenge, um, but there's a lot of support that's available. So wish you all the best, and thanks for uh, having me this evening. Thank you.